Welcome to the AIM Insight eTraining Series presented by AIM Sports, providing support and training of your AIM Sports products when and where you want it. This module is creating and installing SmartyCam graphical overlays using the Smarty Manager software. The Smarty Manager software is designed to allow you to customize the appearance of the video and data integration on your SmartyCam. In this video, we will explain how to create a new configuration with multiple objects, including placing and configuring a track map overlay. Here is a playing video with the data integration and map overlay already configured. This video has eight objects that were previously configured. The first couple objects highlighted here are sponsor or track logos. Later I will show you how to create and place logos. Here in the lower right side of the video is five different objects including speed, RPM, throttle position, lap number and times, and g-forces is the last object to the left. And finally, in the lower left-hand corner is the map overlay. As you can see, a small marker is linked to the vehicle's position on the track to clearly understand where the data and video integration is positioned on the track. Now that you have seen the final product, let's look into how this is accomplished in the Smarty Manager software. Here is what the Smarty Manager software looks like when you first open it. To start the process of creating a new configuration, click on the Smarty Cam Configurator button. This opens the configuration section of the Smarty Manager software. To create a new configuration, click on the New Configuration button. The first thing we do is to give the new configuration a name. In this case, we will call this configuration Grass Valley and type it into the New Configuration window. After inputting the new configuration name, click on the OK button. Now, the new Grass Valley configuration has been created and saved, and as shown here is the selected configuration. We can now start to create the look that we want on our video. One of the first things we can do is change the background. Many users like to have a more realistic background in place to help them place their video objects. To change the background, click on the Open button to see the available background choices. As you can see, there are five choices. The most popular is the Real Race choice. To select that background, click on the Real Race background item. Now as you can see, this background has a realistic view similar to how many will mount their Smarty Cams. There are many different video objects that you can place onto your Smarty Cam videos. The first one we will look at here is Logos. The Smarty Manager software can create logos from an image that you already have and we also have popular logos already in our database. To select or generate a logo, click on the Logo Manager button. This is the Logo Manager window. From here, you can select a logo already in the database, or add, modify, or delete logos. But for this example, let's create a new logo from an image we already have saved on our computer. To add a new logo, click on the Add New Logo button. And this open window is shown. Use the Windows controls to browse to where you stored the logo image. In this case, the window opens to the last folder that was open, and that is where my image file is located. To select the image, click on the file. In this case, the grassvalley.jpg item. Then click on the OK button. This will open the Logo Settings window. Here you can see the logo you are generating, as well as resize it. If it looks good like this one does, we just need to give the logo a name. Let's name it Grass Valley and type it into the name box. Once we get the name typed in, click on the OK button. Then click on the OK button to finish creating our new logo. Now, to place this new logo or any other logos already in the database, we need to select the Logo tab. Under the Logo tab, we see all of the logos in our database. As you can see here, we have an elevator bar, and there are more logos you can scroll down to see. However, the new Grass Valley logo is right in the top row. The way to place a logo out of this list is to click on the one you want, and then hold down the left mouse button, and drag the logo onto the background, releasing the logo where you want it to show in your final Smarty Cam video. There, we have placed it where we want it. The next thing we can do is add other video objects. The software provides nine different sets with different styles. Here we are going to open the tab marked Set 5 and look at what is available. 
Each set has similar objects but with different styles. From set 5, let's add a few different video objects onto the background and place them where we think they would look good. This works the same way as with the logo placement. Just click on the one that you want and then hold down the left mouse button and drag the object onto the background and release where you want the object to show in your final SmartyCam video. First, let's start with the measure set double. Perfect. Now let's select the lap number and time object and drag it onto the background. The next item we want is down lower than we can see, so again we have an elevator bar. Let's scroll down to find more video objects. The next object is the date and time. This object is helpful so you can easily identify when the video was taken. Again, drag and drop it onto the background where we want it shown in the final SmartyCam video. Now let's scroll down a little bit further and place a text box video object onto the background that we will configure with the driver's name. Great! Now the last object we want to place on this configuration is the track map. The track map is a very cool object as it graphically shows the track layout and the actual placement of the vehicle on the track. Select the Map tab. Then just like any other video object, drag it onto the background. However, once this object is placed, it is a little different than the other objects, as you can resize it to fit the track map shape. Some tracks fit better in a wide box and others in a tall box. To resize the box, just click on one of the handles with a left mouse click and hold down the button and drag the box to the size that you want. In this case, the track fits into a fairly square box. Be aware that you will not see your actual track map in this box, but understand that the software will do a best fit of your track map into the box you create here so you really can't go wrong. OK, now that we have placed all the objects onto our background, some objects may need to be configured. Here are several tabs that control the configuration of each video object we have placed. The first tab is the Grass Valley logo, and we are happy with the size that we set it at. So let's click on the next tab, the Measures Double Set object. On this object, we have two values that we can set the upper bounds or limits on. The first is the engine RPM. Right now it is set for 20,000. To see the other available values, click on the Open button. We are provided with a list of upper bounds that we can select. In this case, the range of the engine is a little less than 8,000 RPM, so we only need the RPM video object to have an upper limit of 8,000. As you can see here, the RPM object now has a high scale of 8,000 RPM. Let's do the same thing for the upper bound of the mile per hour object by clicking on the open button. And now select the 120 upper bound item. Again, the speed graphic now has the scaling we want. Let's now check the other tabs to see if any of them need extra configuration. Select the lap number and time tab. The lap number and time object does not need to be configured. Click on the date and time tab. This also does not need any configuration. Now let's click on the Label tab. This object does need the text of the label replaced with the driver's name or whatever else you would like. So click on the Label text box and replace the text with the driver's name. Perfect. The last tab in this configuration is the Track Map. Select the Track Map tab. Here we can set the dimensions of the track map object, but since we already did this with our mouse earlier, we are done configuring the video objects. There are a couple more settings I want to show you here in the configuration section. The software allows you to set a custom prefix that will be applied to all video files generated using this configuration. To set a custom prefix, click on the Set Movie Name button. Here you can use a default prefix of SC or you can create your own custom prefix. To change the prefix, just click in the box and type in the new value. In this case, I'm going to input GV for the Grass Valley track we are running on, and I like to follow it with an underbar to provide a nice separator from the rest of the file name.
you do have the option of transmitting the new file naming prefix right here from this dialog box. But we are going to send all of our settings in just a moment. So we will click on the OK button to save the settings. The last setting I want to discuss here is some general settings. To open the general settings, click on the general settings button. And this window opens. Here we can set the default unit types for this new configuration as well as any more new ones created in the future. As an example, let's click on the open button for the speed setting. And as you can see, you can select kilometers per hour or miles per hour. I'm going to select the mile per hour item. After you have selected and changed all of the general settings you want, click on the Confirm button. OK, now we have created a new configuration, configured all of the individual video objects, set a custom prefix for the resulting video file naming, and set the general settings. Now we need to send the configuration to the SmartyCam, as that is where the video and data integration happens in real time. After making sure our SmartyCam is connected to the computer with the USB cable, and turned on, click on the Smarty Cam Transmit Receive button. Here, the Smarty Manager software is connecting with the Smarty Cam. Once the connection is established, this configuration window opens. On the left side is all of the configurations you have stored on your computer, and on the right side is the configuration stored on the Smarty Cam. In this case, we want to send the Grass Valley configuration from the computer to the Smarty Cam. So we need to select the Grass Valley configuration on the computer by clicking on the checkbox next to it. You can select multiple configurations if you like, even all of them, but in this case we are only going to send the Grass Valley configuration to the SmartyCam. Click on the Write to SmartyCam button to start the transfer of data. Once the configuration has been transferred, it will show up on the right side of the screen. In this case we have two configurations now loaded on the SmartyCam. To finish the transfer process, click on the Confirm button. There is one more step that needs to be done if you have, like we have in this example, included a track map video object or you want to use the GPS start finish line coordinates for lap times. We need to send the track information to the SmartyCam. To do this, we need to first leave the configuration section by clicking on the Back button. Then click on the Tracks button. This will show you a list of all of the tracks in your database. A side note, if you need to learn more about creating tracks, please view the AIM Insight training video, Creating a New Track in GPS Manager. While the SmartyCam is still connected to the computer, select the track from the left side of the window that you want to send to the SmartyCam. In this case, select the Grass Valley Track checkbox. After the track or tracks you want transferred are checked, Click on the Send to SmartyCam button. And as you can see in this example, the Grass Valley track joins the Daytona Oval track in the SmartyCam track database. One last thing about track maps in the SmartyCam. The track map will not be seen on the video until the SmartyCam is within 5 kilometers of the coordinates of the stored track. Location is how the SmartyCam selects the track to display on the video. So if you set up your camera away from the track and test it out, don't be surprised if the map does not display until you arrive at the track. In the case where you have more than one track within a 5 km area, the SmartyCam will need to make two laps on the track to determine the correct track, and then it will be displayed. For more AIM Insight eTraining content, and information about upcoming on-site training seminars, visit www.aimsports.com forward slash support your source for support and training of AIM Sports products when and where you want it.